tell you something. You need to learn this lesson right now. If you don't learn it now, wallahi, you will learn it just before you die. The lesson, every single thing in this world, the life, all your possession, all your wealth, your business, your cars, your homes, your children, everything will be of absolutely no benefit the day you die. In fact, if a person during his life had a golden tooth or a silver tooth, and he was buried with that golden tooth, and his family remembered afterwards, they will bring him out of his grief to take the golden tooth and put him back in his grief. Nothing will benefit you, and nothing will go with you. So the question is, oh Allah, what is going to benefit us on that day? When we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being held to account, Allah Azzawajal gives us the answer. He says, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ The only thing that will be of benefit is if you are to come on the day of judgment with a qalb salim, a pure heart. That is what will be of benefit, a pure heart. And so on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judges the heart before the actions. You see, al-munafiqoon, the hypocrites, they also have actions. They pray, the believers pray. But the difference between the hypocrite that does the same actions as the believer, the difference between both of them is the heart. The hypocrite comes on the day of judgment with a corrupt heart. With a heart that denied and rejected Allah Azza wa Jal. And the believer presents with a pure, clean heart that knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, يَوْمَ تُبْلَ sarair On that day, the secrets are what is brought out. What is in the heart is brought out and tested and put to account and held to account. وَحُصِّلَ مَا فِي الصُّدُورِ what was in the heart will be coming out for judgment. And so this is why in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always emphasized on the heart. Always. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say that within the body of a person, there is a mudra, there is a piece of flesh. إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلُحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّهُ If this piece of flesh was upright and straight, and firm in its belief, then the entire body would be upright and in good shape. And if this piece of flesh, fasadat, it was corrupted and destroyed and run over by sins and desires and evil temptations, as a result, fasad al jasadu kullu, the entire body, all the limbs would be corrupted and evil, and black. This is what would happen. And that piece of flesh in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala wa al qalb. Indeed, it is nothing but the heart. So a pure heart means a pure body. Means the limbs are pure, the eyes will be pure and only seeing that which pleases Allah. The tongue will be pure and only speak that which is pleasing to Allah. The ear will be pure and only hearing that which is pleasing to Allah. The limbs will only touch what is pleasing to Allah, and the feet will walk to that which is pleasing to Allah. That's why it is important to focus on the heart. If it's pure and clean, everything else is pure and clean, and a person passes on the day of judgment. That's what will benefit you on the day of judgment. My brothers and sisters in Islam, for those that are listening on the recording, you see, Allah Azza wa Jal described the heart that will benefit you as the Salim heart. You know what Salim means? I loosely translated it as pure. But Salim is something that, if I say this bottle is Salim, meaning the bottle is not scratched, 
It's pure. It's clean. It's just come out from the factory. Untouched. That's what Salim means. That's how you have to come on the day of judgment. You know when you were born, that heart that you had was Salim. The heart that you were born with, it didn't know what sins are. It didn't know what shirk was. It didn't know what innovations were. It only knew Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it knew tawakkul. Because a baby when he's born, all he knows is how to suckle milk from the breast of his mother. And that's complete tawakkul. Why? Because even the mother has no involvement in the process of the milk coming out. This is designed by Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's a miracle in how it works. The milk is collected and gathered and it comes out from between the tissue and the blood and then it's filtered at the tip, pure milk comes out. Allahu Akbar. And so the baby has a pure heart. That's the heart you need to come with on the day of judgment. Like the heart that Allah gave you when you were first born. A pure heart, a qalb salim, is a heart that is not damaged by sins. It's a heart that is not damaged by shirk in all its forms. And a heart that has not been destroyed by innovations. That is al-qalb salim And you have from now until you die to make sure that you are working on your qalb for it to be salim, for it to be pure and white and crystal and polished. You have from now until you die. Hence, the importance of the subject and the importance of the matter. My brothers, my sisters in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, before He created the creation, He decreed a purpose for us. And that purpose was for us to worship Him. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I did not create mankind and jinn kind except that they worship me. This is what Allah decreed as our purpose. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam. And Adam alayhi salam was there. He laid in the paradise as a body. There was no ruh in him yet. There was no soul. There was no life in him. His body remained there for about 40 nights. More than that, less than that. Allahu A'lam, depending on the narrations. Afterwards, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that a ruh will be put into the body of Adam alayhi salam. And this is what happened. But now, at this moment, a mighty command is going to be given into the paradise to all the inhabitants of the paradise. Something huge is going to unfold in the paradise that has never ever happened before. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, فَإِذَا سَوَّيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Allah Azza wa Jal, He said to the angels, Once I design and fashion Adam alayhi salam, وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And when I blow into him my soul, my soul, meaning the created soul. Allah created the soul and He ascribed it to Himself because of the honor of the soul. He said to the angels, the second the soul is put into the body of Adam alayhi salam, فَقَعُوا لَهُ سَاجِدِينَ Immediately, without any delay, fall into prostration. A prostration of respect and honor. So what happened? is that a huge scene unfolds in the paradise, never happened before. The angels, all of them, including Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel who had 600 wings, one wing would cover, would cover the entire skies. He fell into sajda. وإسرافيل وملك الموت وحملة العرش Those who carry the throne of Allah, they are four now, and on the day of judgment, they will be eight. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have been given permission to share with you people 
one piece of information about the angels that carry the throne between his elope and his shoulder is a distance of 700 years of travel. All of these angels made a sajda to Adam alayhi salam, a sajda of respect. I ask you a question, my brothers, my sisters in Islam. What honored Adam alayhi salam? What honored him to the point where Allah would command the angels to make a sajda to him? What honored him? His body? No, not his body. Because his body was there. It lay there for many nights. And they weren't commanded to make a sajda. The second the soul was put into his body was the very same moment they were commanded to make a sajda. That means what gives you and I our honor and our worth and our value is our soul. That's what honors us. When the human being dies, the body is taken and put into the earth for the worms to eat it, for the earth to eat it. But the soul goes up to Allah because it is honored. Wallahi, I remember I attended a funeral back home in Australia, in Sydney. It was for a dear brother of ours. May Allah Azza wa bestow his mercy upon him. Wallahi, in my hands were the papers for the funeral that were supposed to be handed to the cemetery for them to give us permission to go and put the body in the grave. Wallahi, I flipped through these pages. And in the last page, there was a sentence there that caught my attention. It said, I, the undersigner, and so this was the brother of the deceased, I, such and such, give permission for the disposal of the remains of my brother such and such at Rookwood Cemetery. Did you hear what he said? The disposal of the remains. The body is described as remains. And the word that was used, disposal. You know the word disposal? Where is it used? On batteries it says, dispose of it correctly. Disposal means rubbish. Means garbage. This is how the human body is described. The disposal of the remains. Yet the sad thing is this. Watch. Today, especially in this day and age, people have given more concern to their body as opposed to their soul. And that's evident from the people's questions. Look at the questions today. Is it permissible to undergo fillers, Botox, lifts, the knees? Can I do a hair transplant? It's all about the body. Gym and what time? Muscles and build. All good, no problems. I'm not here to tell you what's halal and haram. But I'm saying, where's the equal concern for the soul? Instead of a nose job, why don't the people ask, teach me a hadith that will do a character job, will better my character and my manners and my soul and my heart? Where are these questions? Very rare that you hear someone asking, teach me a hadith that purifies my heart. Instead, we're asking, give me the name of a cream that whitens my face. Give me the name of a medical center that will whiten my teeth. These are the questions. And I'm not telling you anything of halal and haram. I'm just telling you, look back and observe. Where are the people headed? Why is that the greatest concern? Meanwhile, the people in past, those closer to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, would always be concerned for the state of their heart and for the state of their soul. Look at the case of Uthman ibn Abil As radiallahu anhu. He accepts Islam. He learns Islam really well. So when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam sends him to At-Ta'if, from Medina to At-Ta'if, and he puts him there 
and he tells him, teach the people of Ta'if Islam, with Salat and so on. So he does his job. And he narrates now. He says, as he was praying, he became disrupted and confused in his Salat. He couldn't concentrate in his Salat anymore. So he got onto his camel. And he traveled to al Madina to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That takes 14 days. He gets to al Madina, he comes to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulallah, inna shaytana qad hala bayni wa bayna salati yulabbisuha alayhi. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al shaytan He's come between me and my salat and he's distracting me in my salat. I forget what I read. I forget how many rak'at I've prayed. I don't know if I said subhana rabbi al-a'la how many times or I said something else. I can't. My prayer is being disrupted. What do I do? He's seeking prophetic medicine and a prophetic advice. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to him, ذاك shaytan. That's a shaitan. يقال له خنزب. His name is Khinzab. He only comes to the believer at the time of salat. If he comes to you and you're distracted in your prayer, then spittle to your left three times. So you go, pff, pff, pff. wherever you are in a salat, standing, ruku', sujood, wherever you are. Do that. Say, A'udhu Billahi min shaytan rajim and spittle. He took this advice, short advice. He traveled all the way back to At-Taif. He said, I implemented this prophetic solution. فَأَذْهَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَنِّي وَالشَّيْطَانِ moved away from me. And I regained khushu' in my salat. The point, my brothers, my sisters in Islam, Uthman ibn Abi al-As, Traveled 28 days to fix his soul. 14 days, 14 days back. He was willing to travel 28 days for a few words that will rectify his relationship with Allah and better the state of his heart and his soul. Today, people are traveling to plant the hair in his head. I'm not saying what's halal and haram. Notice, people are traveling to watch a soccer game. People are traveling from place to place to watch a wrestling match. Alhamdulillah, there is still pure believers among us that will travel to learn the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you don't find in yourself eagerness to travel to learn, and you see it in someone, support them and aid them. Perhaps you get the same reward and your heart becomes pure and purified. Al-Masjid is down the road. Just down the road. We cannot even walk to it. Yet what is inside Al-Masjid is what will purify your heart and cleanse the heart and the soul. But a soccer game that is hundreds and hundreds of miles away. We travel, we go, no problems. I want to entertain my body. I want to entertain my eyes in that which I see. Allahu Akbar. We ask Allah Azza wa to save us and to rectify our state. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, this was the case of a Sahaba, always concerned for their heart. Look at the case of Hamzala, he walks the streets and he begins to scream out, Nafaqa Hamzala. Hamzala is a munafiq. Allahu Akbar. This is a sahabi. Who can put his hands up and say, yes, I'm not free of hypocrisy. I'm not free of jealousy. Who can dare to say about himself, that his heart is cleansed from hypocrisy and jealousy and hatred. Who can say it? So why do we bury it? 
And why do we feel offended? When we are told, brother, this is a hypocritical act. Get your act together. Street in your act. Make a tawbah. Purify your heart. Why do we feel offended? When we are told, Ittaqillah. Fear Allah. Why do we feel offended? When Umar radiallahu anhu would say, this would be the best word that he heard. Believers advising one another to fear Allah, to purify their heart and cleanse it. So Hanvala is walking out of his house and he's screaming out, I'm a munafiq. Oh, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu hears him. He says to him, what's wrong my brother? Why are you a munafiq for? He says, Ya yeah, Abu Bakr, don't you realize that when we are in the presence in the gathering of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's like birds are on our head, the khushu' is high, Allahu Akbar. And when we leave the presence of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and go back to our families and our children and our businesses, Al Islam just goes straight down, our iman goes down, and we don't have that same khushu' feeling when we're with the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why I'm a munafiq. Allahu Akbar. Well, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu experiences the same thing. He says to him, my brother, let's go to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let's go discuss the matter with him. Look at this. Look how much of concern they had for their soul and the heart. He didn't say to him, ya Hanvala, it's too early today. Let's wait back a few hours. Inshallah, we'll see him at Maghrib time and we'll discuss the matter there. No, no, no. Now there's no time to delay this. I don't know if I'll live today until Al-Maghrib or from now until tomorrow Fajr. I've got to address the matter now. Let's go. And they both go to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the situation. I feel I'm a munafiq when you're in your presence. When we are in your presence, the iman is high. When we leave you, it goes down. What's going on? For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, teaches them that if Iman was to always remain high, the angels would have given you salam on the streets and in your beds. Meaning you, you would have, been, you would have become angels yourselves. But Iman is not the case. Iman is going to fluctuate. It goes up and it goes down. وَلَكِنْ سَاعَةً وَسَاعَةً He said to both of them, an hour and an hour. Meaning an hour of devotion and seriousness and commitment and an hour of rest and enjoyment. And the hour of rest and enjoyment, not in haram, but rather in that which is mubah, in that which is permissible. So he teaches him this matter. But you see the attitude, rush to fix that which is in the heart and to rectify the state of the soul. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, al-qalbu salim, a pure heart. Who is the character in the Qur'an that has been described as Qalbun Salim so that we can follow in his path and share his story? Huh? Who said Ibrahim? Ibrahim alayhi salam. Jazakallah khair. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, وَإِنَّ مِن شِيَعَتِهِ لَإِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ رَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ and from the generation of Nuh alayhi salam is Ibrahim. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, remember, I'm going to narrate to him. I'm going to narrate to you his story. When he came to his Lord with a pure heart. Allahu Akbar. Jaa rabbahu biqalbin salim. Every time Ibrahim alayhi salam would turn to Allah, he would turn to Allah with a pure heart. Alhamdulillah that Allah Azza wa Jal told us his story in the Quran and described him with Qalb Salim. Because whoever wants to attain a Qalb Salim, a pure heart, follow this man, follow this legacy, follow this example. Today, in a day and age where influencers are rampant, anyone becomes an influencer today. Open an account. Shake your body a little bit. Follow some stupid trend that is out there. And the followers come in. And the likes come in. And the watch. The views, they call them. Right? And the collaborations come in and someone's become something. 
and then apply and pay $24.99 and get a blue tick, become verified. Ibrahim alayhi salam is a role model that is verified by Allah. There's no need for a blue tick here. If jaa rabbahu bi qalbin salim, I let you know something about Ibrahim. Perhaps you've never heard before. You see, Ibrahim alayhi salam is the only prophet in which Allah azza wa jal would command the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to specifically follow his legacy and path. ثم أوحينا إليك أن اتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين. We revealed to you, O Messenger of Allah, follow the path of Ibrahim. Follow it. And you know, when we do Hajj and Umrah, and whoever's been to Mecca, there is something there that has the name Ibrahim in it. What is it? مقام إبراهيم. What is in مقام إبراهيم? Yeah? His footprint. What is a footprint? When you see a footprint in the desert, what do people do? They follow it, right? The footprint being there is teaching you and I follow these feet. Millions and millions of people on earth push and shove and fight each other not to see the actual feet of Ibrahim, but to see his footprint. Who was this man? Alayhi salam. Who is he? Millions are fighting just to see something of his footprint, not his foot. And where his footprint is, 80% has faded away because the people used to touch it until, yani, Allahu alam, how many centuries ago they marked the 20% that remains there and they closed it and they sealed it off so that. It would have been gone by now. And we pray two rak'at behind Maqam Ibrahim. These two rak'at that you pray, as you pray them, the wisdom of them and the lesson in them is that you're acknowledging and declaring, I am praying two rak'at for Allah behind Maqam Ibrahim, declaring that I will follow in the path of Ibrahim. That's his footstep. These are his feet. Why are they special? Because they walked for Allah. When he went from Mecca to Asham, he walked on his feet. Every step was for Allah. Every destination he went to was for Allah. وَقَالَ إِنِّي مُهَاجِرٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي He declared, I am migrating to my Lord. He left his family. And his newborn behind. He didn't even look at them. He walked for Allah in obedience to Allah's command. This is why he became an example for us. All of us. An example for Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. What is it in Ibrahim that earned him a pure heart? What is the path of a pure heart? What is the belief? of the person who wants a pure heart. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was sent to people that were worshipping idols. They worshipped the sun, they worshipped the moon, they worshipped the planet, the stars. These are his people. That's what they worshipped. Allah azza wa jalla says, وَاتْلُ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ He came and he confronted his people. He was by himself and he said to them, you people, you lot, what are you worshipping? The possessor of a pure heart will question corruption in his society. He did not say, what do I have to do with all this? Khalas, I'll stay at home and I got nothing to do with filth and corruption and evil out there. The possessor of a pure heart will face and will challenge filth and evil in his society. He said to them, مَا تَعْبُدُونَ And what are your people worshipping? Today, the possessor of a pure heart will face society, will say to them, what is this distorting the creation of Allah and the pure belief? The possessor of a pure heart will question this. مَا تَعْبُدُونَ 
And the possessor of a pure heart needs to be ready because corruption and the people of corruption will talk back.